Thank you. Hello and welcome to the I3 lecture series hosted by the Masters in Digital Photography program at the School of Visual Arts. We are thrilled to have a photographer and SBA alum Brian Fink as tonight's guest speaker. Um, originally from Texas, Brian is currently based in New York where he is represented by Clamp Art Gallery. To date he has published four amazing monographs, two, four, six, eight American cheerleaders and football players, Umbrage, Flight Attendants Powerhouse Books, Construction Decode Books, and most recently, U.S. Marshals, also from Powerhouse. Among others, his work is in the permanent collections of the Museum of Fine Arts Houston, Worcester Art Museum, St. Louis Art Museum, Akron Art Museum, Bibliothèque Nationale de France, Kiyosato Museum of Photographic Arts, and the Alexia Foundation for World Peace. Uh, so please help, uh, help me give Brian a, a warm welcome to our lecture series. Thanks, man. Welcome. Thanks. Hello. I'm Brian. I'm a photographer. Um, yeah, it's great coming back. I went to SVA and um, love the opportunity to come back and uh, share stories. Um, I shoot for magazines all the time. I've published books, um, do gallery exhibitions, and I brought pictures from a few different series uh, here along with some work stuff. And I'll just kind of like start showing this and ramble off and um, tell you guys a bunch of stories and kind of like what it's like working after art school and all that good stuff. So this was uh, the first project that I worked on that became my first book. Um, I started this after SVA. Um, I'm from Texas. I, my sisters were cheerleaders. I was like the newspaper yearbook photographer. Um, and it kind of felt like full circle coming back and like being on the football field again. Uh, how I originally started this project was I saw the movie Bring It On. I know we've all seen it. <laughs> um, amazing film. Um, I saw it and afterwards I was like, I need to go to these cheerleading competitions. Um, my sisters were cheerleaders in high school. They had been to these big competitions. I was like, I so want to go and photograph this and check it out. Uh, so I originally started going and would just um, get in the car and like drive down to Florida, Daytona, Orlando. And um, um, this is also the time where I started working for magazines. And I would like um, show, um, call photo editors or well, email people and tell them what I was looking to do. And I would pitch stories to like the New York Times, different things. And I ran some of the pictures in the what they were thinking column. It was just a nice way to start getting work out there. Um, this picture is very important to me because I, in, with telling stories, I think it's very easy to do like all of one thing in the sense to like always go and make pictures that are like funny or overly romantic or might be like sarcastic. And to me, it's important to touch on things to build a story of pictures that touch on a lot of different moods. So this one being much more like romantic, more sentimental. Um, here we see some cheerleaders praying before a competition. Um, it was amazing going there because it was just like this explosion of energy. All the um, time spent like preparing for it, getting ready. Um, and this is a team watching another team perform uh, on stage. After photographing the girls for a while, I wanted to broaden the project and started photographing the natural counterpart, which of course the football players, the guys uh, for the most part. Um, it's, it's, I love working on personal projects. I mean, it's so important to me um, because everything, like all my work, like all of that comes from working on these. And I also love the, the time that's allowed for it. And a lot of that comes from like that um, going to art school and just like having a semester, a year to like work on stuff and really um, try to figure it out. So um, with starting to work on this project, I also started becoming much more interested in like the styling, the costuming, 
And from starting to do this, I started getting uh, fashion assignments um, and other editorial stuff. It was really hard for me to make a picture of the actual event. Um, and it's kind of, it's in general with sports. I photograph a lot of sports stuff now, or have over the years. Um, because it's something that's so, I don't know, it's so familiar. And it was something that I photographed a lot and like went back to and like looked at and looked at. And um, this picture became successful just because of the moment um, that is going on here. And it's something that I constantly look forward now and has become much more aware of it um, when photographing. It's kind of the same thing with this. It's this weird, like, <clears throat> very nice tension in a photograph um, that's not really sure what's going on or it's like the moment that came before or the moment that's about to happen um, to ruin that. Uh, this guy was going over and like getting the ball that was kicked over the fence and uh, he was bringing it back over uh, for the football game. Um, High school sports are great. They, there's so much, um, people give it their all. And this player, this was a Don Bosco team in New Jersey. And they went on to win state this year uh, when I was photographing this. And this player, he played offense and defense and just got like the crap beat out of him. And so at some of the cheerleading competitions down in Daytona. A lot of the things that I photograph, it's very, it's very straightforward. I like, I pick an idea, I obsess about it, um, and then just shoot it and shoot it until I'm like just completely exhausted with it. And um, from like one theme to the next, from the cheerleaders to the flight attendants, the bodybuilders, I work on it, I work on it until I'm just kind of like, it's, it's time to move on to the next thing. And whether that's like a year, two years, three years, just depending on how busy like personal life is, family life, assignment work. Um, but it's always great to have these, these projects to work on. And with the cheerleading, there was the coach, some of the coaches were telling me that they almost um, uh, want like the players to go out and like flirt and go out and get all that stuff out of their system before they go. and. Uh, um, do all the team stuff throughout the year. So uh, at the beach in Daytona, I mean, it's such a beautiful setting, the light. Uh, after the competitions and all the awards, everyone would go out uh, to the beach and the sand and pose and, and celebrate. So from a new, a new story here, um, um, from the cheerleading and the football players, I went on to work on uh, my second project, um, which was called Most Muscular, and this is at a bodybuilding competition. I was originally a, assigned this subject matter from uh, Men's Journal magazine to go to Las Vegas and photograph the Mr. Olympia competition. And from going to go and do that, I just was so drawn to how everything was so like over the top. Everything was like so extreme, taken to like such um, um, an exaggerated level. So I had, did that assignment and then I came back and I started photographing bodybuilding competitions on my own and pitching stories to, uh, made some of these pictures for the New Yorker magazine. And here are some of the trophies. A lot of my pictures also, they touch on different things, sometimes like dealing with stereotypes, um, groups of people. <laughs> this picture I just like. <laughs> Um, not much to say about it, but, um, and also it's like bodybuilding has been something that's been so heavily photographed and it's traditionally, it's very like such a serious, intense thing. And I love just kind of like interjecting some humor into it and trying to approach something, uh, in a different way. <laughs> and even still like. Earlier this month, um, did a shoot uh, down in Miami photographing a bodybuilder. It's interesting when starting to put out certain subject matters, like photo editors and art directors really identify with it. It's very, the working world can be a very, very literal place, um, which is also, it's, it's great and interesting that way because it's, I like, that's why I love sharing the personal work and then really enjoying the assignment work that comes in from that. 
because uh, at this point everything's very, it's all very closely related. And after photographing something for a while, really wanting to try to look at it in a different way, um, and after taking more of like the documentary style pictures, just wanted to really try to abstract things and make it much more about the expression. And this is another one of the trophies. Um, yeah, the trophies were amazing. I feel like I could have like a whole collection of things from over the years of just going and like photographing. Um, yeah, all these different trophies from jobs. Um, this was at the original, the Mr. Olympia competition. And this one. And this became my second show at Clamp Art. Um, um, yeah, back in like 2005. So at the same time of photographing the bodybuilders, I also started on this series, which um, became about flight attendants. And this was the first picture that I made in the series. And this was on a small commuter flight up to Boston. And on the way back, just kind of like looked up and saw this like very, the stereotypical call button. And um, as everyone was like deboarding, my like, assistant and I were like grabbing like the Hasselblad out and the cue flashes and like scrambling and like, awkwardly like crouching down in the seat like trying to photograph this little like call button. Um, it was a fun moment because it was just kind of like I knew it was going to like lead to something, um, the curiosity in something. Uh, and this also just kind of naturally presented itself. It's when I started traveling a lot for magazines and was naturally on airlines and this thing was just around me and um, even though we ended up like pitching different stories to try to get access. Uh, basically how I was able to photograph this was pitching stories to magazines, travel stories, fashion stories um, to help get access and then um, yeah to get out and shoot. And but we put together like me and the editor put together like a giant long list and a lot of airlines just like wanted nothing to do with us but some of, it, some of them were just they got it they were into it and then um, were able, uh, that's how the project started. This was in uh, Malaysia, uh, in Kuala Lumpur, Air Asia, and this was at their flight attendant school. Uh, this is in Iceland. I love, um, I mean, this just the style of people, different hints into their personality uh, are things that really um, make me interested in making a picture about something. Uh, I started this project photographing domestic airlines like Southwest and I don't know if it's in here but there's a picture of Hooters airline and then pretty quickly I wanted to go overseas where it's much more nostalgic and um, yeah I had a different mood to it. Yeah. So uh, and this was in Iceland. Um, I just loved the calmness of the, uh, with the activity going on in the, the flight attendant school. This is like my rock video picture. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. The heels, the hats, the smoke, action. And it happens. Um, this is the exhibition, uh, some installation shots at Clamp Art. I showed the pictures in a few different cities, but we started the, the show here. Um, with Brian Clamp, and these were big, like 40 by 40 inch prints. Um, I've always worked between like a like a 15 by 15, 20 by 20, and 40 by 40 size. And this was the next series I worked on. This was construction. Uh, the next few slides, these are examples of different book covers that we played around with. I worked with a. Uh, uh, an art director friend who is the art director of Details Magazine for many years. And um, these were a few different things and none of these were chosen, but I think it's just nice kind of seeing the process of things um, until like getting to the final. And this was, I worked on this book with Decode Books, which is a great small publisher out in Seattle. And it was a wonderful process because we were just 
worked very closely directly with the publisher and worked on like the sequencing and um, he would print out, we went through like two, I think, two small book dummies and then like a final like full size just to be able to like sit with it, live with it, flip through it um, before actually finally going on to press along with doing like all the rounds of like the color proofs and stuff. Uh, this was some of the layouts that we were playing around with. And I always go on press. Um, it's just such, it's a nice, it's like a great experience to do and f final stage in the process. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, I mean, most of the color proofing is done kind of like leading up to it with uh, the color, um, with just the proofs, the back and forth and making notes and stuff. Um, and probably about like 10% of colors finally like adjusted on press, but it's just, it's a nice kind of um, final thing. This was in, um, in China and in Shenzhen, just out of Hong Kong. And they, they got, these are the different plates. Um, the guys had an amazing eye. Um, and it's just kind of like a crazy experience of being on press for like 12, 14, 16 hours straight, taking a break, going back and everything like building up and then just um, seeing the final thing and seeing it come to life is pretty awesome. Uh, this is the viewing board. And everything's printed on like the giant sheets, then cut up, and this is the cover. And this is lunch at Ikea. <laughs> There's a big Ikea right there. Uh, the, my publisher, he goes there every time he goes, and just love, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so this is all the sheets, how everything's like laid down to dry before it's cut and bound. And this is the beautiful printing plant. I always get sick when I go here. It's like all the ink in the air and just everything. It's, um, um, yeah, it's a crazy experience. And uh, this is the final book. And a few of the spreads. And the similar installation shots. These were smaller prints. I wanted to tell much of, more of a story. Um, on the gallery wall uh, and just kind of, yeah, I wanted a different experience looking at something smaller in scale. And this was the final. And a few of the photos from it. This was actually kind of the hardest thing to go and photograph, um, just with all the um, liability involved. Um, I originally started approaching like the contracting companies, like on job sites, but there's basically like three cooks in the kitchen, um, the contractors, the architects, and then the money. And in the end, I, I was like, oh, I should try approaching the architects. And it was just reaching out to a lot of them, but them kind of being more the creative person in the picture, they were the ones that, um, how I ended up getting access to go and shoot. And it was an interesting place going on. I mean. You think of construction sites that there's all this like stuff, but it was a lot of just kind of like wandering and looking and like the moments felt very different to me. I mean, each project, it's kind of stylistically, it feels like it changes just very subtly or um, yeah. Uh, and these, it, they felt much more, began to feel much more like landscape pictures um, than previous work had. And booby pictures. And more, the boys on the job sites, boys being boys, and then guns. Um, <laughs> it's weird. It's like, I feel like, oh, I don't know. Um, I feel like my life is like climaxing in this like photographing vices and all of these like weird things. I don't, um, it's, it's, it's a fun thing being a working photographer and traveling. Um, it's just like every day it's new. Um, this, for the past <clears throat> week and a half, I've been working on a story for the New York Times Magazine, photographing um, people in their workplace, photographing during their lunch hour. And they're great, like weird, quirky, weird pictures. And it's wonderful. I mean, like people are like, you're always like clicking and then shooting like right as like the food's about to go into the mouth. And like yesterday at CNBC, this, the guy's eating like uh, barbecue uh, ribs, but like eating them with chopsticks, and it's like they're all like sitting at computers. And 
I don't know, I just like, it's kind of like an amazing life being a photographer and getting to go and like always see new things and just these <coughs> totally random experiences. I mean, half the time it's like, I don't know where I am these days. It's like in the past month, <coughs> I was like in Illinois, Miami, Oaxaca, like drinking mezcal, mezcal story for like a week. My uh, driver that I was working with, he was like drinking more than me and my assistant were. We were like, we lived through all of that. Um, and then like San Francisco, LA, um, it's fun. It's a really fun, like addictive lifestyle and kind of really awesome to be able to go and see all these things. Um, this was a project I worked on about US Marshals. Um, it came about uh, a buddy of mine that I went to high school with. He became a U.S. Marshal in Houston. We reconnected, likely up to like our 20-year high school reunion. And um, I was just like, wow, that's incredible. Um, sounds amazing. He was like, you know, come check it out. And I was in Houston over the holidays and um, went down and, um, yeah, I wanted to shoot this. And um, he put me in touch with their PR department in D.C. and I was like, I'm a photographer, I'd love to do a book. Um, you guys game? And they're okay. Um, I think it's kind of amazing photography now. I think it's a really great time for photography. Um, and like people wanting to tell their stories and to be seen and like, um, um, yeah, just reality TV and now like social media, like all of this stuff. Like people want the attention, they want to tell their stories. Um, and that's like how things like this were able to go and do. Um, they wanted to share what they do um, because they just kind of like, well, other government agencies don't like, or people are more familiar with it. Um, so that's kind of how I started doing with the marshals. This was <coughs> um, a wild thing. Um, this was down, I shot at a bunch of different cities around the country and this was um, a trip between, a Texas trip between Brownsville and El Paso for like a week going to all these different um, like offices along the border town um, and this was a guy, him and his brother, who was actually pictures in here also, um, they were running to get over the Mexico border and they caught up with him at this, um, at like a family member's house, they were waiting for him. Um, so, um, yeah, this is, this is at a training facility. I like the, the play with the reality on things. It's something that I keep revisiting and revisiting um, these kind of like, because I love working in the documentary tradition, but I like when pictures kind of, when you look at it between like the lighting and the moments of not really knowing whether something is real or not real. Um, I like that curiosity that is built. Um, so it was at a flight, at um, flight attendant school. <laughs> All of my stuff just overlaps, and it's kind of like, well, I'm photographing U.S. Marshals, but then I'm on a plane. Um, this was at a U.S. Marshals training facility in, um, at LAX. Um, this was one of the first pictures that I took of the series, and this is um, <clears throat> my buddy Cameron, um, yeah, who brought it all together. Uh, this was the, the, from the previous story of the, the brother when they were getting arrested. And it was a really, for me it was a, I don't know, it was, it was a really strange picture to make. It was that personal space, this thing was happening, um, and it's the very subtle tear like on his chest um, um, that really <clears throat> became touching um, and I always use flash and I like I went into the front seat and was like making this picture and just knew that I couldn't be like popping stuff and um, just because this this moment that was going on um, this was upstate <clears throat> We did a lot of ride-alongs uh, with the U.S. Marshals, and like my assistant and I, we'd be like in the back seat of the SUV with the tinted windows and <clears throat> uh, with the binoculars ourselves. It's it was a very a lot of the time just kind of get very wrapped up in the worlds uh, when taking pictures. Um, kind of very because it's kind of like you share so many experiences together with the people that you're photographing. Um, 
Um, and I like that about it. Um, I feel like tonight even it's coming and like sharing. Most of the time it's just kind of putting out individually, but I think it's kind of like people are the combination of all the stories that they tell. Um, so. And the pink handcuffs. This was in Vegas. Um, and John McAfee. Uh, this was an assignment for Wired magazine uh, from going and photographing guys with guns. Then I start getting assignments related to it. Um, I think people are familiar with the story with John. It was like a few years ago. Um, I. Wired Magazine had been doing a profile on him for like six months on and off. And right before it runs, they sent me down to Belize where he was staying to photograph him and like all his bodyguards and his girlfriends and all this stuff. And um, that's my point. <clears throat> when I'm working and shooting, it's always these like random places, which is kind of great. And these like different, like different worlds to like have these vignettes into and to experience. and. His whole story is like, for, um, he's a big tech guy, he developed McAfee Securities, like, which is on like most websites and stuff. Um, crazy smart guy, like got in some issues here in the States in the like, late 90s, went down to Belize for like 10 years. And um, when he was down there, then he started getting, I don't know, he's bored, smart, I don't know, whatever, started getting into some trouble with like, the government there with like accusations of drugs and the guns and like putting together like a little like police force thing. So the photo editor is like, let's send Brian <laughs> um, to go down and hang out. And um, yeah, I spent like two days with him and photographed him with his girlfriends. And it's interesting. I mean, I think about photography a lot, obviously, I've done it for many a long time. and. I think what part of it, I'm just kind of like, how did this stuff happen in front of me, or how these things? And I think a lot of it is like, it's a personality thing. Um, <laughs> I just, I totally wasn't, I like the transition. Um, <laughs> um, it's just kind of, I kind of like, I don't know, disappear in a place. I'm very like unassuming, I'm not too intimidating. It's just kind of like, hanging out, I get that. It's just like that time spent. Um, I mean, so much of what I do is traveling. It's like sitting on a plane, sitting on a rental car, um, you know, wherever it might be. And then it's just like that kind of like, it's cool just, you know, letting things happen. And even though um, sometimes instigating a little bit, <laughs> um, but also seeing things. This was a job, now some, some work stuff, just wanting to show from like, the personal, like some of the work things. Um, but I love my assignment work. I've always, like, that was always my goal. I always, um, like, going into art school, I was like, I want to be a magazine photographer. I want to um, do that. And at the time, I didn't really realize. It was, like, the lifestyle that it entailed, the, like, the travel, the, like, all that. But it's, um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a really good time. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So this was for ESPN. This was... Uh, college football game, LSU. Uh, it was a cool thing they did for a while. It was called One Day, One Game. And they would get like a dozen photographers, a dozen writers, everybody would team up and like just scour. And they were funny, you know, people would photo, you shoot whatever you want, basically. And some people would go and whatever, I don't know, do locker room things, do crowd things. They would kind of make fun of me afterwards because they would always be like, Brian would go to the cheerleaders and to like the crazy tailgating. It's so, like, I would shoot nothing else but like lots of that, um, so yeah. And you know, being a photographer, I honestly believe like reality is the best. It's like you can never make it up as amazing as you can just like go and find it and see it. Um, um, I, yeah, there's just kind of something simple and nice about that. Um, yeah, and this, I mean, I, I love the assignments that I get. It's kind of like stuff that I would just love to go and shoot anyhow. Um, and, um, yeah. And some more, this was a different assignment, but some more football. A 
love it. People are amazing. I also love like one thing with like thinking about photography. Um, in doing it, it's kind of like in thinking about like personality and like how things come together. Um, I really real realize like, oh, hold on, I feel like I should explain these. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, this was a shoot for Details magazine. This was um, this story was um, called Frat Boys, and um, um, I don't feel it, they weren't real frat boys, but it was uh, a, a bar on Avenue A called the Boys Room, and it was frat boy themed. And I just love the whitey tidies and like yeah, all the boners and like all that stuff, it was everywhere. Yeah, my assistant, he was like, I thought they were trying to steal my wallet, like, because it's crowded, it's like a crowded place. I was like, dude, they're just grabbing your ass. And um, yeah, I just love to be along for the ride. It's kind of pretty great. Um, wow, I forgot what I was gonna say before. Um, oh yeah, I, um, perhaps blue ribbon, <laughs> attention span. <laughs> Um, and this one, this is the last one. Let's see what's next. Um, so, well, this one kind of fits what I was going to say. But um, my process of like taking pictures, I just uh, was thinking about it. It's, it's totally fits like my personality. And I realize I have like total um, OCD. Like everything much like, I, I see like things happening and I must like formally try to make it like super clean and to organize it. And then it's like I want to mess it up again, just a little bit, when it like something happens or um, that makes it that that moment, um, that picture. So um, this was my first story for National Geographic. Um, this was oh my, two years ago. Um, uh, this was about um, Americans' obsession with beef, and I photographed it all in the state of Texas. It was great to go back and spend like three months on and off between here in New York and Texas and photographing something of like where I came from. This story, it came about um, kind of through my Instagram feed. Um, I live in Brooklyn. I love barbecue. I love smoking barbecue. I love eating barbecue. I love all of it. Uh, I love throwing barbecues. Um, I take lots of barbecue pictures. Um, the editors were somewhat familiar with my work. Um, I had applied to like some grants. I didn't get any of them, but um, um, yeah, the, the, um, one of the editors reached out and we were like, we're thinking of this story for you. And um, I was like, amazing. Um, um, and I was like, I'm from Texas. I love barbecue. So they sent me on like my barbecue event, my meat adventure. Um, I went all around the state. This was up in the Panhandle. Uh, went to these old ranches where they like still go out to the pasture and like uh, brand out there. It was all from from farm to table, uh, butchers. I'll, actually, I'll show the pictures. Butchers, which was amazing. This was like our second day in Texas, um, up in Lubbock, and um, uh, we went to this very like artisan butcher. And within like 20 minutes, two guys had killed the cow, cut it in half, skinned it, and like put it in a fridge and hung it up. And it was just kind of amazing to see firsthand. Um, with every, when all this is going on, there's always a health inspector there. And um, like expected, this is actually the head um, off to the right. And they're like ex inspecting every cow for like disease and stuff. And the butchers were like, is this like turning you off beef? I'm like, no way, this is kind of like amazing. Um, yeah, and barbecue restaurants. I love how like carnivorous this whole like thing feels. It feels, yeah, very animalistic. Um, lots of eating. This was uh, at the Big Texan um, eating competition. I love that being uncomfortably close to people all the time. <laughs> it's interesting, like going and shooting, it's like I'm so used to like with shoot photographing all the time, like I get this thing where I just like, I like when I'm not working, I'm just kind of like looking at people. And if they like catch me like looking, it just, it feels like it should be natural, but there's no like camera or um, it, <laughs> then it just feels creepy. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, 
in the whole obsession and over the top and um, beef. Yeah, and it was an amazing experience being out at, like out at this ranch for like a week. Um, National Geographic, they just, it's such a unique thing. Um, so different than other publications just with the amount of time and just kind of like delving into it. It's a very thorough, sometimes overly thorough process in a really great way. Um, you know, this is another story I did for, for National Geographic. This was earlier this year about the science of taste. Um, and uh, yeah, I do a lot of food related things also. Um, this was at a taste lab in Philadelphia. Uh, where they stain the tongue blue and count the taste buds um, to determine whether someone's a super taster. Apparently, I'm a non-taster. Most of us are non-tasters. Sorry. Um, um, but yeah, it's based on uh, like three-fourths of the po population are non-tasters. Um, but it's more like I love eating hot sauces and I don't know, all these random things. Um, I come from it. This was at, uh, in Copenhagen. Um, um, and something different. Um, this is a current series that I'm working on called Hip Hop Honeys, Video Vixens. Um, I'm kind of, it's very, the stuff that I photograph, it's kind of self explanatory. Um, um, this came about a photo editor uh, that I work with in Italy. We were at this photo festival. And she had seen this BBC documentary about video vixens. And she was like, Brian, the subject's amazing. You would love this, just the people, the styling, and all that stuff. And um, yeah, um, yeah. I would normally like, I have no deep reason why like, I go and shoot things sometimes. I mean, during this time, I was getting a divorce. Life was crazy. I'm like, this sounds amazing to hang out on the set of like a hip hop videos and like be around all of this and be like, wow, I'm here like shooting this. Um, so that's how this started. Um, but I love it. I, f I think like it's, um, I don't know. I was going to tell, <laughs> um, um, <laughs> I was trying, I'm trying to like, I didn't want to, it's like self censor. Um, Anyhow, <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a fun thing to shoot. I'm starting to work with uh, New York Magazine published a small piece. I'm starting to work with a writer there and also possibly like an illustrator to do something that's um, um, maybe not totally about photos, but something outside of just maybe a straightforward photo book. I'm trying to figure that out now. Um, Uh, but this I work through a casting director and it's everything from kind of like B-level stuff to um, like Jay-Z videos, Busta Rhymes. Um, and it's great. It's different levels of like casting and some it's wonderful when it's like super low budget and like this, like in some like hotel room that they didn't even pay for like a location. We've been like chased out of locations. Um, um, uh, but it's nice to be the, all the different situations. It's like I'm just I'm one of those people like I don't really overthink things. I just do it and do it and do it and do it and do it. Um, and I like that about it. Um, I think it's, it's a fun exploration. Hmm. The world of selfies, she does it so well. Uh, and I also like these making these kind of like, this felt like a new picture to me like just very ambiguous moments that didn't really talk about anything, but just kind of like created a curiosity. I love all the attitude. I mean, these, the models, they're just like owning it. I think it's pretty awesome. And from this, I get like advertising work to do like, oh gosh, what was it? Um, <laughs> Soko, Southern Comfort, thanks. This is Adrian, everyone. We've worked together forever. <laughs> we were working today, I dragged her along. So <laughs> here we are. Um, booty. <laughs> Smoking. I put my vices <laughs> everywhere. Um, the guns isn't a vice. 
money. I love it. Everything's fake. It's this like interesting thing of like fake guns, fake money, fake booty, even though no one would admit it. <laughs> And uh, yes, so this is the last little series that I brought. This was an assignment, guys. This is what I do for work <laughs> these days. <laughs> uh, this is a job for Boston Magazine. Uh, this I shot in December, amazing way to end of the year. Um, they were like, we want to send you to Jamaica to photograph at this hedonism resort. I'm like, OK, um, sounds great. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically we saw everything. There, to put it into perspective at the resort, there was a all nude side and then a prude side. And the prude side was pretty much all naked also. So um, yeah, we saw, there, well I'll show some of the pictures. Um, yeah, but it's great, I mean these people were there it was fun. They were there, you know, enjoying themselves. Some people were like swingers, um, nudists. Some people just wanted to go and watch. That's cool too. Um, but I love it. It was nice. It was wonderful being there. It was kind of like Austin Powers, like creating a little like fig leaf that like went around like all the body parts. Because like seeing these things, there's I mean, there's so many pictures that have been made of like swingers or like sex clubs, and it's like. It's the ambiguity and the curiosity, I think, that makes it really nice. It makes you want to like keep looking at the photos um, instead of something that's like, um, yeah. So um, this is the last one. Um, it's a crazy ride. It always is. Um, there were foam parties running around naked. It's great. Mezcal adventures in Mexico. Um, it's a good time. So. Thanks for listening to my rant, guys. Uh, I'm happy to answer questions. I was just curious about um, your choice of using a square photograph or to in work. How did you arrive at that? And just curious oh. about it. Um, right. Um, I love the formality of the square. I, I started shooting Hasselblad um, back in like late 90s. And it just, um, it's also going like, I mean, my, like I grew up like loving the photographs of like <coughs> traditional documentary photographers like Eugene Smith, Jill, um, Eugene Smith, Jill Perez, uh, Robert Frank, like that whole like black and white storytelling thing. Um, and it came to a point like, I mean, that's even, actually it's a good point to make. That's even like what I was doing when I was in school. It's like I went and photographed like um, heroin use in the South Bronx and like a friend that was a drag queen and all this. And it was all like 35 millimeter black and white, like very reportage. Um, and then I got this grant to go to India and work on the story about child labor. Um, and then just after doing it, I went through like some personal stuff. I was like, I want to find something that feels more like my own. Um, and I started shooting with the Hasselblad and introducing the cue flashes um, and just to kind of like really heighten the moment um, between like the use of color, the flash, the moments and the square it just felt right. Um, um, it's just like the formality of it and stuff. Um, it was different than I had been seeing and just a combination of the different elements. Um, uh, it just felt more like my own. And physically, I loved the physicality of like holding a Hasselblad. I would mount like a 90 degree prism and cut off like this flash bracket and just be able to like shoot in just the way that the square felt. Um, and then came Instagram. <laughs> um, um, yeah, that's kind of the process. Also, I mean, with starting to shoot color, I like this, the, just the detail in the medium format. Just kind of dealing with that. Now I shoot um, Nikon. Uh, like D3X, D800, D810, uh, still with Q flashes and stuff, and sometimes um, mixed with other like speed lights or pro photos, different things. Um, uh, but I shoot, I, why I started shooting that was just the, uh, that it does like the four or five sensor crop and the viewfinder crop. And for me, it was a close, 
easy transition from film into digital. And I, I'm a better photographer. The responsiveness of like how tight the TTL is and the, um, the autofocus and the auto exposure, it's just like I can, yeah, shoot more, play around more, look for other moments, do things. It's just the spontaneity, because so much of my pictures is just about reacting in a situation. Um, and just, yeah, it works. If it didn't, I wouldn't be doing it. So, um, yeah, guys, I'm happy to answer like technical things also. I realized I didn't really touch on that very much or, um, yeah, or any sort of like work stuff also. I'm sure that's um, good things. So you've done both advertising and editorial work. What are some of the major differences for you personally um, and professionally? Oh, okay. Everybody, this is my girlfriend, Diane. She came in late. <laughs> um, editorial advertising. <laughs> um, it's both great. I do one for a while, and it's fun to run off and do another one. Uh, they're different experiences. Editorial, it's great just running around with like my assistant and uh, like that relationship and just kind of like going and exploring. And then it's fun when there's like budgets and um, um, the producers just like making everything happening. And um, yeah, they're different experiences and it's fun doing both. I couldn't, um, I mean, yeah, I couldn't always do advertising. I go a little crazy. Um, and editorial, it's like it's the go, 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 go. Um, you kind of like, yeah, run out of steam at some point also. So it's a nice combo. Uh, to build on that question, actually, um, do you have a situation where, let's say, with the flight attendants, um, it comes back as an advertising job? Do they, does somebody say, hey, you did a great job with your book? Mm -hmm. Can you shoot our next advertising yeah, yeah. campaign? Yeah, it's happened twice, <laughs> which is great. Um, I did some stuff for Air New Zealand a few years ago, and especially with um, the flight attendants, uh, with something being such a unique um, um, subject matter, um, a lot of times clients are very literal. They need to see to make that connection of like, and I get it. It's like they have to pitch it to a client. The client needs to see what they're going to get type of a thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've also, I did a bunch of Delta stuff last year, um, for a while, and it was great. It's, um, it, a lot of it comes very directly related, like, some of the, to get back to the hedonism thing, <laughs> um, I did a story for Men's, Men's Journal, like, last spring, and it was photographing this big cruise ship, and then, um, um, yeah, it was all these, like, hot tub parties and stuff. And then I, yeah, then the editor, like, that stuff comes out, and I get a call, like, right away to do that. I mean, it's a, it's a good thing. It's kind of, it's a very simple thing to say, but it's very much like what you put out is what you'll get called to do. Because um, sometimes I know, like, coming from being, like, to make that transition to, to working, and if it's, you make the decision to work, like, commercially, it's kind of like, oh, well, I want to work, and I want to get work, or I just want to be busy working, but it's like, that's why it's, I've always loved doing like the shows and that balance, that work personal balance, um, because that's kind of where it all comes from and put out what you want, what you want in return. So, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about uh, gaining access specifically in the beginning of your career? Like you said that you would like pitch stories to places, but can you just touch on that a little bit more, please? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, when I was, for instance, like when I started working on the, the cheerleading story, I reached out to PR departments. Uh, There's basically like two national, like big cheerleading comp um, organizations. And I would, straightforward honesty um, like hey I'm a student I've been taking some pictures for the village voice um, sent them like some copies of a few tear sheets and then they just gave me a press pass um, I think it's just kind of like it's it's the same thing when I like reaching out to like the marshal's office it's kind of like just being honest and straightforward and direct it's like I want to do a book um, I 
work on this and it's great, then that's what it you know will become. Um, so I think it's just kind of real. Yeah, I guess that. Simple. Yeah, simply that. It's an it's an interesting thing though being on assignment, um, especially editorially because a lot of the times like access somewhat has to be figured out and it's kind of like being a photographer. It's like part psychologist and just like meeting like totally different people um, and then trying to figure out how to like um, um, yeah how to produce stuff and that's why something like I realized like I mean you guys I'm sure you, you guys are great photographers um, why I get a call is that I've been doing it for a while it's pretty it's pretty simple that way um, like editors call because they know I can go somewhere and uh, um, yeah, like recently did a job in Japan, uh, in um, uh, Nagasaki, and it was to photograph this hotel that's run entirely by robots. And but it's like, yeah, it costs money to get there. It's kind of like it's, it can be expensive. They're flying myself and an assistant, going through airports, and like the local airport wasn't going to let the batteries go on the plane. This has been like an issue like forever. Um, or it pops up every so often, um, but you know, getting to a place, you know, crazy jet lag, like feeling weird, like then like how do you interact with people and re relate and be able to like produce? Um, it's fun. It's great, um, and it's just nice. I mean, all of these like I know like wow when I'm in this thing I'm like how do I prepare myself? Um, you know, just get my head right type of a thing and like be on and. Um, yeah, and then produce pictures. So, um, yeah. Wondering if you're uh, you have any long-term projects you're working on professionally and personally, either. Um, currently working on the hip hop series. Uh, it's been in the works for uh, three years now. It's a little longer than I normally work on stuff. I'm trying to complete that this year. It's just like the last like two years literally have been like slammed with, uh, with assignment work. Um, like last year it was like six months for National Geographic like flying all over the world literally <laughs> everywhere. Uh, one story came out the next one's coming out in their uh, March issue about food waste. Um, so I always, it's, yeah, it's, um, it's time to complete that soon, um, is my goal, and then kind of see what's next. A lot of times things, I believe they kind of present themselves, um, just interests and transition from one thing to the next. So, um, yeah, we'll see. I'm in, that's why I took the mic. I'm interested in, uh, you mentioned Instagram. And how, how do you use it? Use it for exploration, promotion, behind the scenes? What do you do with Instagram? Uh, I'm trying to figure that out also, <laughs> completely. Um, a friend of mine that I went to art school with, I met in San Francisco last week, and she's one of like the photo editors at Instagram now. And we had dinner, and I was like trying to drill her for everything. <laughs> I was just like, tell me, what's the answer? Um, I mean, I think it's great. I love these days, like how much people are looking at, everyone's looking at pictures, everyone's taking pictures. Um, it's kind of amazing. It's, um, everyone can like put pictures out there in the world um, between Instagram, between like, you know, self-published books. I mean, it's all like, it's, I think it's a really awesome time for photography. Um, Instagram, I, I, it's promotion. Um, it's that balance of like, wanting to show like works like professional pictures and then to personalize a little bit with like family stuff and then also to always show traveling like to me that's kind of like a big thing like clients if they're like you know because I mean yeah everyone's looking and looking at it, it's like people see like wow Brian hasn't gotten off a plane in a while and that just perpetuates itself um, it's something that just like they see the work they see the work posting the new work sharing it um, National Geographic's great. They, well, it's good and it's kind of annoying, but it's cool that they allow put the platform out there. They give all the, like photographers the, like the login information, and they want people to like post from the field when they're shooting. And now I'm doing like stuff, posting stuff leading up to like the next story coming out. It's in the March issue, and um, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's 
to have fun with it ultimately. So, but I think it's also become kind of um, a platform within its own, in the sense that like I come from a generation of like loving photo books and like like seeing pictures on a gallery wall. But it's kind of like it's its own like thing unto itself, which I think is yeah another outlet. Hi, could you share your thinking about lighting and just your approach when mm -hmm. you're setting up a shot? Sure. To light um, I use quantum Q flashes. Um, I love them. They're so small and portable. <coughs> Run around everywhere with them. Um, and I originally started using them because they were strong enough to overpower daylight at like a very, like a closer distance, at like a five to eight foot type of a thing. Um, in more recent years, I've switched to their just their newer models. That's all like TTL, and I have a I like have one on camera. My assistant has one off camera, um, and I'm always like I don't know like playing I don't know trying to figure out like lighting that makes sense with the current subject matter or where I want to change it um, for myself. Like more like some of the more recently some of the pictures were like. I would be like shooting a, a subject and then my assistant would be holding a, a second cue flash at like a 90 degree angle to subject to create more of like a hair light and these kind of like cross lights type of a thing. And now I'm kind of bringing everything kind of like closer to camera below to kind of like blow things out. And, um, I love how portable they are. And it's, I also like to be able to create different lighting moods very quickly because sometimes like especially like we were talking before about starting about like oh scouting office locations before like going and working on this times job and um, I, I show up and shoot <laughs> it's like what I do all the time so it's kind of like having these like things depending on the location and the mood that I want to create and all that type of stuff I also work with like pro photo like six B's like off camera um, and like speed of light sometime um, like close to camera on telephoto, different stuff like that. But I think also when building like a story of pictures, it's nice to be able to to mix it up so everything doesn't have the same tone. And it's just with the, with moving the lighting around, um, yeah, enables that. So, yeah. Um. What was what was your experience at SVA like, and how does your work differ now from then? And um, did you ever experiment in the studio and stuff like that either? Um, I mentioned some of it before, but um, yeah, I mean, I went from being wanting like the black and white thirty-five type of a thing um, style of like the um, traditional like journalist documentary photographer and I think it's nice to realize that because it's kind of like like when I was in school I was just so like this is me this is what I wanted to do and it's nice to kind of like allow things to change and um, yeah I'm always curious about that um, even though I think I change things very subtly to me um, that feels nice uh, with trying different stuff I mean I shoot in studios I do different things um, um, yeah, I deal with like productions, like big productions. What I love doing is running around with like one assistant. Like that always just feels good. It feels good when you're like snapping on the battery pack and like running around and jet lagged and just kind of uh, having fun with it. So, yeah. Uh, shooting other people, did you ever get a response? from people that saw their image, if it was negative or positive? Mm -hmm. Oh, can you repeat it, please? Oh, can I repeat it? Um, <laughs> Why do you put me on the spot like that? <laughs> um, do I get negative or positive responses from people when I photograph them? That's your question, right? Um, sure, both, yeah. I mean, negative, I don't know how much, but I mean, people like being photographed. I ask people. I never shoot somebody that doesn't like want their, like say yes to having their picture taken. Um, it doesn't feel right. Um, I wouldn't appreciate that from someone else, but it's, um, plus I just, I like being 
cl close to what I'm shooting, close to people, up in people's business, like people eating lunches above keyboards and like, like right there, like, um, um, yeah, that feels good. I mean, I'm trying to think of other, um, yeah. I want to add just to continue with that question, as, as long as you're here with us. Um, mm -hmm. With the marshals, I mean, you're talking about a government agency, you're talking about law enforcement. Um, were there a lot of lawyers involved or were there s different restrictions put on you as to uh, what the images should look like or what kind of images you could actually use for the book? Um, no, not in um, deciding like any sort of aesthetic or editing choice like that. There were legal things that were, that they set forth in the beginning that I was very aware of. Uh, I wasn't able to use some of the pictures because of that, but it's like a privacy thing of being in people's homes. I mean, they're like, you're not allowed to enter like premises when I'm there. The reality of it is all this like stuff is going on and the guys, the marshals on the ground there are just like, come shoot all this. So um, then we go in and yeah, I mean, there's a, some nice photos that we're able to use, but I get it. I mean, it's fair. I didn't have consent. So um, yeah, yeah. Um, when you're given an assignment, are you told where to go or do you choose where to go? Um, um, yeah, I mean, they call, they book my flights, book the travel. Um, yeah, I mean, normally you're there to cover a specific thing, so, uh, you go and, and do that. Um, like, yeah, um, what, you're going to get a call and not go no, do no, what you're I'm told saying, to do? Um, kind of like with the meat one, you know. Oh, okay. It could be, you know, would it be your choice or do they send right, you right. somewhere specific? <laughs> <laughs> like with different Sorry. kind of assignments that you Yeah, get. yeah. I was stuck in the head of like what I've been doing uh, for the past week and a half. Yeah, I mean, that in that case, it works differently. I mean, National Geographic's a little bit of an exception in that way. Like they kind of like, for the most part, kind of like put you out in the field, um, like send you somewhere with some contacts and then it's kind of going and meeting people and kind of figuring it out that way, um, building a story. So, but I mean, there's, there, then there's like with that magazine, then there's meetings in DC and there's discussions. It's kind of, um, yeah, um, talk about, you know, the whole editing process, why one picture is chosen from another is a conversation. It's a, a big thing. Um, yeah, I mean, it's working within the confines of the subject matter of the, of the, of the assignment, whether how broad or specific that might be. Yeah. So, uh, Brian, thank you so much. And also, thank you in particular for th making a hiatus in your shooting job so you could be here with us tonight. Oh, yeah, it's I know my you pleasure. Have to make a special it's fun to come for in. that. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys.